I'm gonna share with you my three biggest, dumbest mistakes that I made throughout my PhD. One of them cost a lot of money. If you're new to this channel, please remember to subscribe and hit that bell notification because I'm gonna talk about everything PhD, tips, tricks, otherwise, and I wanna share all that knowledge with you so your journey into your PhD career is for you and no one else. All right, let's have a look at these dumbest things that I've done, a uh, little bit embarrassing. Okay, so the first thing is that uh, I spent far too much time on Facebook. At the time in what, 2007, you know, like I'd moved from the UK to Australia. I was using Facebook to connect with family, friends. And look, I'll be honest with you, there's some days where I just didn't do anything other than go on Facebook and Reddit and other social media sites. Um, and then, you know, that would quickly snowball. The issue is, is that once you kind of get into the habit of going on Facebook when you first get in in the morning, and then, you know, you have your morning tea, and then someone comes in, you know, it just completely distracts. So it's like, I, I read this book, uh, Eat the Frog, I forget who it's by, or Eat That Frog, I think it's called. Um, they talk about doing the hardest stuff first. So in the morning, just if there's that experiment or that bit of data or that graph that needs to get done, just go in and do that first. Like eat the frog, do the most disgusting and most annoying thing first. Um, and then that kind of sets up your day, sets up the momentum. And uh, yeah, look, I spent far too much time on Facebook. I was stalking uh, ex kind of girlfriends, uh, friends, uh, people in the UK that I missed, you know, and it just didn't really set me up to a good schedule. So what I recommend for anyone starting a PhD is that in the early days, you really lay the kind of foundations of getting in, doing something important, like right away before you check emails or anything. So at the moment now, I don't check emails until I've done something in the morning, i.e. create a video, write on some blog posts, do some personal admin, like I do the most important stuff first before doing anything else, anything that could be distracting. And I recommend that for PhD students is that you come in, you eat that frog first thing in the morning, um, and then, you know, it's in the afternoon, you can tidy up all those emails and all of the little kind of like distracting bits of doing a PhD. So yeah, look, what happens when in my case, you end up going on Facebook for such a long amount of time is that it really sort of puts the pressure on towards the end, you know, that end of the second year to the beginning of the third year, when you're like, oh shit, I don't have much data, or I need some more stuff. Like it really kind of just, makes future you work harder. So consistency is something I've always advocated for on this channel, a little bit every day. You know, an hour and a half to three hours of good focused work, working towards your PhD is what it's all about. And uh, yeah, I remember times where maybe a fortnight had gone by and I'm like, what have I done this fortnight? And that really sort of caught up with me later on. So that was pretty dumb. The second dumbest thing I did was treat a academic like a friend. Um, now that's not to say you can't be friendly. And I completely misunderstood and misinterpreted the fact that friendly is not being a friend. And let me, let me explain what happened. So um, I spent a lot of time in physical chemistry world where I was using a lot of really expensive equipment. Um, and uh, I was due to get trained up on this certain thing, but something came up. So instead of just saying like a nice professional email, something along the lines of, um, dear Grant, I can't possibly turn up because of this. This has come up, I'm so sorry, uh, let's rearrange the time. I thought this person was friendlier because we'd had a few beers and we'd have, had a laugh before. Um, and so I just made up this lie, which was just like, oh, sorry, Wednesdays are my lie-in day um, and I don't get out of bed until 11 o'clock, so I can't possibly meet you at this time, which was just a lie. I thought it was funny. Um, I thought that they would have a chuckle and then that would be the end of it. Now that escalated to my supervisor and I got in trouble for it. Um, now I'm, I'm kind of laughing about it, but at the time I was a little bit annoyed um, because I was like, I thought we were friends. I thought we could, you know, have that kind of level of, of, uh, of banter, but hey, we couldn't. And 
that's probably for me to understand that, you know, doing a PhD, it's still a workplace um, and there is a certain hierarchy and, you know, you can be friendly, but you can't expect these academics, you know, to be your friends. And there's a very subtle line. And so I, I quite often, um, yeah, kind of just stepped over that line, trying to push the boundaries a little bit. And uh, maybe that didn't work out so well for me a few times. Um, but yeah, I mistook being friendly for being friends. And then that got me into a bit of trouble when I sent that email. So yeah, it happened a, a few things happened like that. So for PhD students, I recommend just reminding yourself that your, your academic supervisor, your um, anyone that's training you, any other academics, you know, they do like to be treated with a certain level of respect. Um, and you know, you can be friendly, but you don't have to be friends and just keep it professional. Yeah, keep it professional. Okay, and the third most expensive, dumbest thing, and this is by far the dumbest thing that I ever did during my PhD, is I broke a $20,000 piece of equipment. Now, here is the backstory. It's a little bit convoluted. I'll try to keep it short, but essentially um, during my PhD, I used a lot of atomic force microscopy to analyze the surfaces of my solar cells, which was fine. So my supervisor trained me, it was all going well. Um, and at the top of the atomic force microscope, there is a laser, a mirror and a detector. And you plop that on top and there's a little mirror that you know a laser comes in, bounces off a cantilever, which touches the surface and goes onto the mirror and then into the detector. And to change the angle of the mirror, there was a little tiny lever. And occasionally that lever would get like a little bit loose. And so you would have to tighten it up with an Allen key. Um, and it didn't seem like much. I was like, okay, but I didn't have an Allen key. So I took the, the $20,000 head of this AFM machine. Um, I took it to the workshop. Now, most universities have workshops, or at least they did in my day, I think they're getting rid of them now, um, but they have workshops where essentially, you know, there's uh, people who are very good at building things from aluminium, wood, and they just like, they're awesome problem solvers. And so I took this really delicate bit of machinery in, or like uh, equipment in, into this place where they're used to dealing with nuts and hammers and spanners and screwdrivers and all that sort of stuff. and. I handed them this $20,000 head of this machine and I said, I need an Allen key that fits in that screw. And they were like, yeah, no worries. So they went over, they got an Allen key, they put it in there and they started turning it. Now, the thing is, is this mirror could only go so far, like it was tiny, tiny. And if you pushed it too far, it just hit the top and it snapped. A design issue maybe, but I'm, I guess they were never expecting someone to take it to like a big burly man uh, with big screwdrivers and stuff. So uh, yeah, he got this Allen key and he was like, oh, it seems to be stuck. And I remember the exact moment where he was turning it. And just as I was like, oh, be careful, I heard ping and the bloody thing. And I just saw $20,000 just flashing in front of my eyes. Um, and I didn't know what he'd broken at the time. Something went ping and landed in, on the floor. And I was like, is that the screw? Is that the mirror? Is that the detector? Like, has, has the, did the shards of something, you know, did that cause any extra damage? It was just insane. And I felt so embarrassed. I felt bad. And obviously I, I had no option but to just own up to the fact that I had made a mistake. And I think that's my, probably the most important thing is when you make a mistake in the PhD world, just owning up to it and accepting the consequences. Um, I uh, remember going into my supervisor's room who owned, it, who, who owned this equipment and uh, I said, oh good, you're sitting down. And when I said that, I think she immediately knew there was something wrong. Um, and yeah, $20,000 uh, went down the drain. Um, we did actually end up getting a small bit of mirror and trying to fix it, but it was never the same again. Um, and that was probably the dumbest thing. 
So there we have it. There are my three dumbest mistakes. Let me know in the comments if you have done something similar or if uh, yeah, you've got any tips for other PhD students, that would be super helpful. And if this video was helpful for you, please remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna share with you more PhD and academia type tips and information in the future. I've got some awesome video plans and I don't want you to miss out on them. All right, I shall see you in the next video.